Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 17 of We the Revolution. Today is the day we're going to trial Robespierre. And firstly, let's read the news. Dear Alexei, I cannot live with the burden of a sin that I committed unintentionally. There is something that I need to tell you, Alexei. I was involved in little Frederick's death. I was approached by people who told me that my son, my only son, had been caught red-handed during his attempted desertion and was awaiting execution. They showed me proof and promised he would be freed in exchange for a detailed description of your family, your habits, your views. I gave them a few seemingly harmless pieces of information and they used them to kill. I did not want this. I have never killed anyone. They did it, yet I'm still haunted by guilt. I cannot continue to live like this, sitting in the same room with you, pretending that nothing happened. I can only hope that one day you will forgive me, that you will understand I was tricked. I have always been your friend, Fidel. Farewell, my friend. <gasps> Our mentor! No! Well, to be honest, I'm not even mad. I guess it was a hostage situation. Oh no, is he going to commit suicide now? So, how about you? Okay, he's oh, he's accused of counter-revolution and treason. We have him, Monsieur le Judge. We have Robespierre. Finally, we can try him for the terror he has brought upon us for all the accusations of treason, for his dictator dictatorial inclinations. At a time when the new government was full of corrupted people, he earned the nickname the Incorruptible. Nevertheless, France has paid a price in blood for his ideals. The law of 22 Prairial, which made it possible to sentence people without a trial, may have been proposed by Couthon, but it was the authority of Robespierre that led to its implementation. The defendant wanted to give himself the means to kill his political opponents, a perfect tool that would prevent them from testifying in court. When Robespierre pointed at someone, they were as good as dead. Moreover, according to a rumor, Robespierre allegedly suggested one while, uh, once while having dinner with Bertrand Barrière that France could benefit by decimating its population, that only a ruined and thinned out but ideologically pure society could rebuild France in the spirit of the revolution. Why would Robespierre, a man whose reputation was once irreproachable, engage in such atrocities? Dictatorship, Monsieur le Judge, is our last accusation. We find no other logical explanation than the incorruptible's desire to gain absolute power over France, which is equivalent to treason. After the defendant's arrest, we searched the city hall and found a seal engraved with the fleur de lis, the main symbol of royalist power. Whew. Well, there is a lot here on you, buddy. So I guess you know. Oh! Nice, I can appease the common folk and the revolutionaries at once. That is very good. That's very, very good. So, if I sentence him to death... Oh, yes. You're going to die, buddy. I'm sorry. But no, I'm not sorry. You... It was your... Oh, no. Ooh, there's not much to do here. I guess the seal of the fleur de lis could be evidence. Maybe mass murder was the method. Maybe the law? Oh, it couldn't be his personality. Nothing is his personality, it seems. Hmm, so absolute power was probably the motive, and the law was the method. Ha, <laughs> no mistakes! Oh, buddy, you're going down, I hope you know that. First of all, I ask the accused if he's able to speak. Well, I can't. Monsieur le Judge, everyone here demands that, in accordance with the law, we need only confirm the identity of the defendant and pass sentence without trial. <laughs> Ooh. You're going to get your own medicine now? In accordance with the law, perhaps, but is it moral? Let the incorruptible taste the law he made for others. Are you Maximilien Robespierre? Yes. We can now sentence him to death for his crimes against the people. Tinville, chill. We're not like that. We don't do that here. Were the recent arrests a prelude to your decimation of society? He's the devil himself. Gossip. Could never. What kind of man could think of something like that? A monster. To destroy the nation and make place for those who are loyal to him? It is beyond terrible. Not me. Tens of thousands have left their blood on your hands. It is not gossip. You sought to destroy the entire nation. I mean, we have met him in person. We know his personality a bit. Because he was the one that told us that 
we shouldn't just take too long for any cases. Just behead everyone. It's not that bad. And then every, those, those shortened cases too, where we don't even get to ask any questions. Or you just have to decide between life and death. That was his idea too. So, of course. Do you admit that you are guilty of treason and beheading politicians who were hostile to neighboring countries? Never. No. I cannot look at this traitor. I only served France. The people. You can tell me that. Then why do you have a seal with the fleur-de-lis? Forged. Not mine. He is trying to lie his way out of this. Which foreign ruler promised you the throne if you eliminated those politicians loyal to the revolution? I removed saboteurs. Like you. We'll remove your head. How am I a saboteur? Did you push through the law of 22 Prairiel in the convention to allow the mass murder of civilians? Hard to talk. It'll be even more difficult when they've cut your head off. Not to murder. Then why this criminal and murderous law? For the good. If he says it's for our good, I'll take his head off myself. Of France, not yours. Did you long for absolute power? Never. And yet you are known for taking merciless measures against those who... Politics. Like here. Politics. We are in the court now, and the court is ruled by Themis. Keep the fools thinking that. Give the bastards what he deserves. Well, I guess he's not wrong, because... I guess politics does have a role in here. Although I'm trying to keep justice a bigger role. May I remind you that the defendant's identity has been confirmed and his guilt is obvious. He can be sentenced. I know the law prosecuted Tinville. Hurry. Fainting. Well, that's all the questions I have. Good, then you are going to die. So. I mean, we heard it, our we heard it ourselves when he talked to us once. That the citizens should fear, sh should feel fear and, and everything. So, hmm. the confederate confessed to the crime, probably not. He never does. Was his act counter-revolutionary? Yes. How did the defendant explain that he was in possession of a seal? It was... He claims that it was falsified. Guilty, and I will say it again. He is guilty. Do the guillotine with him. The end of tyranny. Long live the judge. Yeah, thank you. So I wonder, I am executing a famous figure again now too, so who will die next of my family? We will see. I mean, this, as far as I know, the act has three ga has, uh, the game has three acts, so one of my family has to survive at least, with me. Who will it be, I wonder? This event really calls for a speech, right? Although, do I have any points? I don't know. Oh, one. Oh, nice. Okay, so, um, attached was manipulation, withdrawn was aggression, was good, and no opinion was aggression, was also good. Ha, nice. Okay, people. Future generations will remember that we were not cowards. They will remember us delivering punishment for such hideous crimes. Murderers, traitors, deceivers, you have to eliminate them or innocent lives will be in danger. These criminals think that because we are tolerant, we are also weak. That is enough. Yeah. Love me, crowd. Love me. Yeah, let's not make such a long story out of this. No, he really hanged himself. Neighbors discovered the body of your mentor, Raymond. He was found hanging in the living room in his apartment. They testified that Devoyer had left before dawn when he must have left the letter at your desk, then come back and committed suicide. The neighbors heard him crying, loud sobs that stopped abruptly. His room was a mess. 
There were a number of half-full glasses of wine and empty bottles, with witnesses saying that he had been drinking a lot lately. Raymond Devoyer, the person who introduced you to the world of law books and clauses, your mentor and friend, was involved in Frederick's death, and now a different judge shall evaluate his life. I feel sorry. I don't know. I'm not mad at Devoyer. I think it was... If it really is like he wrote, he didn't even know that this was that the information they gave him was used to kill Frederick. Also, I mean, he was kind of jealous on the first big case that we got, that we got to judge it and not him. So maybe it was in this situation that they approached him, so he didn't think too much of it. I'm sure he wouldn't have done it if, if he knew that Frederick was at risk. I'm sorry, there were you. There is, a, there is not a lot of uh, conversation between our family anymore. I need to do something to do. I need to do something from with my wife. So let's read something. Sorry, son. Oh no, not again. Don't go there. Ramel is hurt. Raphael too. I should lower some fervor around my districts, maybe. But on the other hand, I should take this one back. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So our intrigue against Robespierre is done. It was a perfect intrigue too. Nice. Robespierre's time is over. Now the convention must choose new members for the Committee of Public Safety and deal with the chaos in the city. Your last speech was impressive and you will surely be able to convince them at least one more time. Unlimited powers at your fingertips. But do we want that? We're just a judge. Is it really good if we have unlimited power? Who are you? So where are we in hierarchy now? What? We're on top? Nice. Henriot is gone, Robespierre is gone, Danton is gone too. Oh, he escaped. Well, that is a clever man there. I hope you're staying out. Can I punish Renard now? That would be nice. So, who are you? Jean-Francois Varé, a 38-year-old farmer chef who worked for Marquis de Rouget, is awaiting trial in a prison cell. His former employer was a monarchist and plotter who was sentenced to be guillotined and stripped of his fortune. We established that Varé was not only a cook but also a friend of the Marquis. We do not know what he was doing after his employer was arrested, however, a year later he opened a luxurious restaurant in Paris called Under the Gold Chimera. It is especially popular among the aristocracy and rich merchants and manufacturers. Okay, wait, what is he accused of? Counter-revolution and assault. Varé was brought to the National Guard by a furious crowd after he hung a sign over the restaurant that read the best citizens are welcome. The Parisians who conducted the unauthorized arrest was accused the restaurateur of having counter-revolutionary views and fighting the people of Paris. Soldiers arrived quickly at the scene. Although they did not manage to save the sign, they stopped the crowd from setting the restaurant and its guests on fire. The investigation revealed that Varé was clearly giving clients from lower social spheres worse treatment than aristocrats. He would even overcharge them or refuse to serve them at all. One of the most telling incidents involved the indignation felt by the rich and respected cobbler Paul Idrak when he was publicly forced to leave the restaurant. Allegedly, Varé personally escorted Idrak outside and called him a pleb, not deserving to eat with his superiors. Well, I suppose I'm going to decapitate him. Fighting the people of Paris, so did he really assault someone? Or is it like just psychological assault? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, there's one trap. Oh no, there's one mistake that we can make. Okay, so what do we have here? The sign is definitely counter-revolutionary. Maybe the treatment of clients? Could this be like his personality? Or could this also be counter-revolutionary? This is hard. I'm only allowed to make one mistake. And one of them is a trap too, so I guess the exclusive restaurant is a trap. Because this doesn't fit anywhere. I guess the treatment of clients is his personality. Yes. Oh, and it's also something else. 
to be honest, almost everything could be seen as counter-revolutionary here. Here, friend of the Marquise is also counter-revolutionary, right? Yes. Oh, that was the only one. Nice. I was thinking that the exclusive restaurant is nothing. From is the trap, so maybe the chef is his personality then. Oh, so that was the trap. Oh, great. Oh, so maybe exclusive as an. Ah, I see, I see. Oh, okay, so it's not counter revolutionary, so maybe it's his. Okay, so maybe it's his personality. Yes. Who? Forcing the cobbler to leave. So maybe that's witnesses? Yes, yes. Okay, so only design. Oh, okay. Who? Yes. Okay, buddy, what you did wasn't very nice, so not nice people lose their heads here. That cooking piece of shit thinks he's better than us. Please introduce yourself. My name is Jean-Francois Varie, Monsieur le Judge. Jean-Francois, you are accused of having and acting upon views that are contradictory to the accomplishments of the revolution. How do you plead to those charges? Those accusations are ridiculous. It's just slander and an the illegal activity of people who are jealous of my business. The files clearly indicate that it was you who broke the law. Tell me, when and how did I break the law? You were denying service to citizens that you consider to be inferior. Moreover, you openly admitted to it in front of those discriminated clients and everyone else. That's just a misunderstanding between my clients and I. Definitely not a matter for the court. Uh, well. Oh, I want to hear what he has to say. Call in the witness. Please introduce yourself. I'm Paul Idrak. What is your occupation? I'm a cobbler, Monsieur Le Juge, like my father and grandfather. Did you give the accused any reason to throw you out of the restaurant? Not at all. Varey told me to leave because the high and mighty didn't like the company of a cobbler. Did you behave inappropriately? Were you too loud, perhaps? No, the only concern was my background. How did you know that was the reason? Varey told me so himself before even opening the door. I showed him the money to prove that I could pay, but he wouldn't listen. Obviously, Baron Laval and his mistress didn't like the idea of sharing the room with a cobbler. Okay, so I just have to look up what a cobbler is. A cobbler is a shoemaker. Um, do you of other do you know of other people who were forced to leave the restaurant? What do you know about the political views of the accused? Hmm, what shall we ask him? Although, I mean, we know that he forced other people out too. So maybe, maybe asking about the political view could be something. Although, how should he know? Ah, uh, let's just ask him. What do you know about the political views of the accused? Monsieur le judge, I have been a revolutionary from the very beginning and I can smell a monarchist a mile away. This one is a full-blown enemy of the revolution. How can you be so sure? It was enough just to hear what he said when throwing me out. Go on. When I landed in the mud, he said that in the past the plebs knew their place, but the revolution had turned everything upside down and damn the revolution. Can you prove it? Am I not the proof? Hmm. Monsieur le judge, I don't recall using such words. This man tries to cast aspersions on me. Did you hang the sign over your restaurant? Yes, Monsieur le judge, I did. Why did you do it? The message on the sign clearly contradicted the revolutionary ideals of equality and fraternity. I just wanted to let everyone know that my restaurant fulfills the requirements of even the most fastidious of clientele. What about ordinary people and their requirements? I would eat there, why not? It's not what you think. There are a variety of restaurants, both cheap and expensive. I just wanted to let my clients know what they can expect inside. The sign indicates that a wide range of clients are not welcome. Everyone is welcome as long as they know how to behave and pay for what they eat. I can at least be allowed to expect the money they owe and good manners from them, can't I? What a snotty greedy son of a bitch. Do you hear the contempt in his voice? I don't know, I mean, the cobbler just told us that he was able to pay. He showed him the money, but he still got thrown out. Which citizens do you prefer to, do you refer to as the best? Those who are well versed in the etiquette and pay for their meals the full price. Who fulfills those requirements? I know from experience that it's mostly aristocrats and industrialists, high society as they are sometimes called. So from your perspective, aristocrats are superior citizens. I never intended to divide people into superior and inferior. Ah, people say other things about you. Yet you did. Your sign denied access to those you considered inferior. Did you see it with your own eyes? 
No, the crowd destroyed it. I only wrote that under the gold chimera is where the best citizens eat. What's counter-revolutionary about that? Liar, we know what we saw. You can't even read, you drudges. Haha, <laughs> don't say that. Do you want to lose your head? He's still about to go free? Really? Is it normal for a restaurant to refuse clients? Yes. Is it normal for a restaurateur to refuse clients? When a man whose pockets are filled with nothing but holes comes to a store and asks for a gold snuff box, do you think someone would serve him? So you ask people to show the contents of their pockets at the entrance? No. Then how did you know whom to serve? It's obvious at first sight. Oh no. I forgot. I didn't read what she said. Well, he's a jerk. You can say that, for sure. Maybe. I would like to know, are you prejudiced against people? Yeah, I want to know that. I hope it doesn't do too much. Are you prejudiced against people who do not come from the aristocracy? Would I? Why would I be? I did not come from them myself. Your behavior would indicate otherwise. People who can't afford to eat at my restaurant like to be complimented. People who can afford to eat at my restaurant. And the others like to be insulted? I didn't insult anyone! Did you hear that? He didn't insult anyone. No. I don't know. He's a jerk. He's a jerk and the jury wants him to die, so let's do this. I would like to put him into prison. Those were the good times when I could put people into prison. I mean, Robespierre is dead. Why can't I do that again? It was Robespierre's crazy idea to not put people into prison anymore, right? Marcel Lucie broke down the door to an apartment he intended to rob. Its owner was out of Paris at that time. The thief did not manage to steal anything since the alarmed neighbors entered the apartment and restrained him while he was searching for loot in the owner's bedroom. Um... Death? Amaury Jacou was riding around Paris on his horse late in the evening. A guard patrol noticed that he could barely stay steady in the saddle. It turned out that he was completely drunk. If the horse had been spooked, Jacoud would not have been able to calm it down. Eh. A constitutional priest, Jean Coté, has been caught melting down gold that was intended for the revolution and selling it. We managed to find people who saw him visiting brothels and drinking. We suspect that the priest was having fun at the expense of the state using its money. That's not nice of you. Okay. Well, did the defendant? No, of course he didn't. Was his act counter revolutionary? Yes. How did the defendant explain the fact that he refused to serve some of the clients? He charged higher prices, I guess. What did the defendant accuse citizen Idrak of? Oh, now we can't even ask our mentor again. <laughs> no, Raymond. So what did he? Oh, damn it! This could have. This, so this could only have been if we asked him the other question. I mean, he said that the royal, that the that the aristocrats didn't like to share a room with him. So, I guess it would be befitting to him to accuse him of trying to steal the silverware. <laughs> so let's go. It would be befitting to accuse him of that. I sentence Jean Francois to be guillotined. Lead the condemned out. Slow him his sh uh, slow him. Show him his place. Bravo. Today we took the side of ordinary Parisians. Ooh. I was correct! <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, I knew you would say that. Off to the guillotine you go. Nah, I don't want to talk about that. Although otherwise... I don't have any points to spend, right? So, ah, no. Let's just... Let's just kill him straight away. This is an obvious and horrible misunderstanding. You can't kill people for such things. Help! I would put you to prison, but I can't. Your eyes were never so empty. But today, I want you to be proud of me. Mm. Come with me, Monsieur Le Juge. Oh, come on, don't do anything to my wife. She's sad enough already. <gasps> Son! No, Bernard. 
Oh god, one of them is going to die. Brother. Ooh. You were in the dark for so long. Bruno? Is that really you? How how is it even possible? Ramel. You were told what you were supposed to think. I had to die as our father's favorite son so that I could be born again. While you have been leading a comfortable domestic life, I was crawling in the mud of a battlefield. We all thought you were dead. It was much easier that way, wasn't it? I was dead and have been through hell. How he abandoned me. Every door closed at the mere sound of my name. That was when hell reached for me. I enrolled in the army, hoping for a noble death. Instead, I was captured, taken, and I suffered. The enemies played a game of dice with me. If I won, I would be free. But for each round I lost, I would also lose a hand. I won the first one. But the second... I was able to escape and started planning my revenge on our family, our father. On everyone who had disowned me. Revenge? On us? You should lay the blame on Clément Rinard. He was the one to... I blame you all. Father, you, France. You want to hurt your own family? You disowned me, as God disowned Cain. Father abandoned his own son, and you did not even try to defend me. I was young. Now you are an adult, and our father will watch your fall from grace. As far down as you can go. He will eventually abandon you, as he did me. I have realized that death will not hurt him as much as watching his other son reach the bottom and become a villain too. And you did extremely well. You destroyed them. The Roland. Pash and his daughter. Gobel and his bastard son. And now, Robespierre. You did everything according to my plan. All I needed to do was awaken your desire for power. I made sure that you would fall with me, right before Father's eyes. Now, he will see that we are equal. Was my son's death also part of your plan? I executed him through the hands of Renard and your beloved mentor. I visited him and made him believe the story of his imprisoned son. Then, he also became one of us, a villain. He helped me to kill your child in order to save his own. See, I needed my own revolution. A place for people you call criminals, because they do not fit in your society. I lead an army of outcasts in Paris. An army of the sons and daughters left behind after you decapitated their mothers. People who have lost everything because of the revolution were expelled, forced to move to a foreign land. In a few days, we will attack Paris and build a new home on its ruins. A place where our father will always keep an eye on both his sons. Are you insane? Wait until you hear what I intend to do with your second son. He's not done anything! He must pay for the sins of his father. 
Everyone must. Just as I paid for the cowardice of ours. He will play two rounds of dice. Each round you lose, he will lose a hand. That is the same price I had to pay. And now it's your son's turn. The price is suitable for the sins you are guilty of. You have killed every person that would be brave enough to face me. Thank you. I hate this turn of events. I really do. I think this is so forced. I have no words for this. I am really dissatisfied by this. Because seriously, I mean, who is... What the hell? So this is not really a, a plot twist that I am like staring at in shock and I'm thinking like, oh, this game is good. I think like, okay, this is going, this is turning a little bit ridiculous. Seriously? This is our brother who our father begged to release instead of kill him, instead of sentence him to death. His father wanted him to live, so he chose the other one and now he's turned crazy and wants revenge on his brother who was old enough even back then and now once and now kills his brother's sons are you f fucking kidding me that's so no that's so ridiculous now this all looks like this crazy brother's scheme that everything we did i mean it is like it was a good twist to like um hold it in front of you who you all got rid of who you all killed and so on but seriously the the crazy assumed dead brother is the villain behind all this and wants to bring us down now for whatever reason come on that's no that's low I have a feeling that he will kill my son nonetheless. Or now that I will have some streak of bad luck and I don't know. The blood is on your hands, not mine. I won again. How did you win? You did not win anything. Shut up. So pissed. You don't need to remind me that my son's hand is at stake. <sighs> hmm, so do I roll again or not? Let's do. Oh, nice. Suck on that, brother. You think that you know what it means to suffer? Wait until I show you. I mean, seriously, this is like, come on. How is everything that happened to him our fault? I mean, how far, as far as I know, he is the one who killed someone so brutally that he would have been sentenced to death if not for our mentor. What did we do to him that he wants to kill our children? Ugh. I, I hate this plot twist. I really do. I am really disappointed <gasps> no i have i lost every i lost i lost all my rerolls damn it i thought i had a new i i got them from new if i <sighs> damn it you will <sighs> fail and break our father's heart only then will my revenge be complete shut up really
Yeah, of course. Go, cut off my son's hand. Really? You... Oh, crazy. Shit. We are done here. We settled the first score. But that is not all I have prepared for you. Far from it. I don't know if, if I'm doing this injustice here, but this plot twist really sucks. Ramel, my friend. Uh, of course, he's not our friend, I guess. He saved me. He saved my son. But he could not save what was already broken into a million pieces. Her eyes were not empty. Her eyes. Our wife knew. Okay, good. Okay. I have no problem with our wife betraying us at some point. I knew it. I had the suspicion of it from the beginning. I don't have a problem with the with the twist that our wife's eyes were empty because she knew what was coming or anything, but I hate this brother plot twist. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Not because it makes me suffer in a way, but it makes me mad. It makes me mad that now it seems like, oh, the, 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 one, oh one, one person steered us like a puppet into the right direction. Really? Ugh. It could have been done better in another person, but not resurrecting your supposed to be dead brother who, I don't know, we had nothing, we didn't even know so much about. Also, what the hell? I don't understand. I don't understand that I'm annoyed by this. So it was him the whole time. <laughs> yeah, father. I I'm sorry. I did not know. There is no way I could have. Yeah, how could we? We all thought he was dead or exiled. He the one who mutilated Bernard? Yep. He ordered his thugs to do it. I cannot believe that I raised such a monster. Yeah, what have you done, father? It's not over yet. I'm going to kill him. He will not stop hurting us unless I do. I must kill him. I lost my son long ago. Then I got him back for a little more than a few seconds, only to lose him again. I am not going to defend someone who has reached the bottom for a second time. There is only darkness in his life. As in mine. Pardon? Nothing. We need to stick together. Can you imagine inviting anyone to spend quality time together when your son just became an invalid? Probably not. That... Yeah, I'm... No, I really don't get this whole... I don't know. I really don't get it why, why our brother hates us so much. Like, us, his brother, who did nothing against him. Oh, okay, so now we're not fighting against Robespierre or anyone anymore, but we're fighting against him. Your brother's army will arrive in four days. What does that mean? So Ramel is still working for us. I mean, that's something. Okay, I think I'm gonna go to some of those districts to lower the fervor because i guess he will go around here now also i want to know what our hideout does now grant immunity calm the crowd lower the fervor in sections controlled by yeah that's good i want that it costs a lot though but still so does this happen the next or not hmm. one um well then you go there and come the crowd. I hate this plot twist. I can't. <laughs> I can't say how much I hate this. How stupid I think this is. What was so important to bring you here, Marad? Is it really so important that we cannot discuss it at my house in the evening? Who's Marad? I would rather do it here, surrounded by other people, as I am afraid that I would not leave your house alive. I do not understand. 
I am in possession of anonymously written documents that describe your actions since you became a judge of a tribunal. Betrayals? Murders? Political bribery? Are you still human or am I talking to the devil? This is all Clément Renard's doing. That man has already destroyed my father and a few days ago he threatened to do the same to me if I would not be obedient to him. Citizen Fidel. Whatever is written there is not true. Those lies are only supposed to destroy... No, I think in, in retrospect, we did those things. We did those things not because anyone forced us to do it. Actually, we were forced to do it because we needed to protect ourselves or something. So, I actually like the fact that now the game shows you in all of the events that you have done before what you actually did so that you are nothing better than the other scheming politicians or anything. I like that. But I hate it that they need to show this to us with through our brother. I would have loved it more if something else happened. If, if, if this happened through anything else. Do not make a fool of me. Today, Renard was found dead at the back of the Café Procope. I know that I will dig into this until I know your every wrongdoing. Every murder, deceit and betrayal. Okay, so someone killed Renard. That doesn't look good for me. But I didn't do it because last night I was busy playing dice for my son's two hands. I can assure you that there is no need. Focus on assuring your family that you are not a monster because I intend to be ruthless. I don't know. First, button up your clothes correctly. I don't even know who he is. Today we only have several minor cases. Yeah, okay, thank you. Rumors, yeah, I suppose. Abel Cluffier, a craftsman who produces wooden toys, attacked Charles Ducré with a metal rod. The victim was a seller of his products. The crime was most probably motivated by the fact that Cluffier did not find Ducré's marketing efforts sufficient. As a result, he decided to injure him and set his store on fire. Uh, that is not nice. <sighs> nope. Leopold Le Beau has been selling exotic stones that are supposed to reduce the humidity and stench of the city. His target customers were mainly old people. The stones were very expensive, yet a very brief investigation was enough to prove that they were just river pebbles. <laughs> Does he deserve to lose his head over this? I guess not. <laughs> Hate me, common folk. Hubert Bernier told everyone in the neighborhood that a detachment of the guard had unlawfully beaten up his brother. We managed to establish that Pierre Bernier had assaulted the soldiers and that they had merely defended themselves. We also found out that the culprit had already been punished. Okay, no, he just gossiped, so then, no, he's not doing it. Um, the violinist Paul Malay assaulted a rival musician. After a performance by the fiddler, Malay lurked in waiting in the street, jumped him from behind and then brutally battered him with a truncheon. We can report that the assailant was particularly cruel when it came to his rival's fingers. He broke seven of them. Ah, uh, no. Hubert Arduin participated in a drunken brawl during which he killed Remy Abadi, smashing his head on the corner of a table. Once he realized what he had done, he hijacked a cart that was passing by and tried to escape. Fortunately, he was too intoxicated to drive properly, and not long after, one of the wheels of the cart came loose, enabling his capture. Sounds like an accident. On the other hand, I can't let him go free, right? During which he killed, smashing his head on the corner of a table. It's the question, I mean, did he really intend to kill him or was it just because they were all drunk and he didn't really know what he would do? You know what? I'm gonna let him go free. Martin Sartre, a prostitute, was serving a range of high-ranking guard officers as well as at least one British agent who we have already sentenced to death. We are sure that she was paid for whispering military secrets to him whenever he joined her in bed. We are sure there is no evidence, though. Thank you, blah. Okay, um, let's see if anything else happens today. So, wife telling us anything? Maraz revolutions.
Marat was nothing but thorough. This morning, Parisians were greeted by a special issue of his newspapers in which he summed up your actions since taking office. He wrote about your elimination of the Rolands, how you exterminated the Girondins on Robespierre's command. He talked at length about how you destroyed the lives of the mayor and his daughter. The Muscadines will learn that you framed Beatrice for espionage. Each of your sins, minor and major alike, was described with nigh analytic solicitude of someone who had been watching your every move for a while now. Your brother wasn't kidding. This is far from over. Marat dragged your sins into the daylight. Your loved ones stopped meeting your eyes. No, 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 no. You, wife and son, look at me. You wanted me to kill Roland's daughter. You are as much in this as, as I am in her death. You were blackmailing me into doing it. You don't get to avert your eyes here. I'm sorry what happened to you, son. But seriously. What will I do about my brother's army, though? I mean, maybe it's best to just get everything into our... into our possession as far as we can. I don't know what else we could do. Although, I mean, everyone hates us now, so... Oh, it's only minor cases today. Oh well, but we're still, we're going to do the minor cases in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time to see where this strange roller coaster will take us.